Throughout recorded history, humans have reported ghosts, time slips, and premonitions. Even today, there are thousands of reports of people experiencing the inexplicable. A couple returns home from their night out. Moments later, the man notices his partner sitting down. The woman also sees her mysterious clone. Was that a trick their mind played on them, or was she somehow in two places at once? This has to be one of the creepiest experiences of your life. A woman walking down the street passes a suspicious looking man. She turns a corner and is shocked to discover the same man walking down the street towards her again. It's like he was teleported there. And two men lose control of their tongues. A guy remembers having a conversation with a friend in fluent French. N'importe quoi. A bientôt, mon ami. Then he realizes, wait a minute. Neither of us speak French. It's very difficult to explain how people can suddenly speak a foreign language. Could there be a scientific explanation for such bizarre occurrences? Professor Jim Gates is a theoretical physicist. I strongly believe that there is a very strange mystery at the core of our universe. To understand it, physicists translate the physical universe into mathematics. And within these numbers, Gates and his colleagues believe they have discovered a hidden code. We found these weird pieces of mathematics that no one had ever told us was part of this set of equations. And this weirdness really bothered me. We found out these objects had computer code buried in them. Weirdly, this code existing in nature is said to match almost perfectly the error correcting codes of ones and zeros used to prevent computers and the internet from crashing. Error correcting codes are very useful in terms of our technology, but we weren't studying technology. We were simply studying matter and energy. Why would there be error correcting codes? Gates believes that sewn into the fabric of physical reality are codes which act to prevent that reality from somehow unraveling or collapsing. That's the only scientific explanation I can come up with. Why would we exist in a universe where the laws of physics have error correcting codes in them? But some scientists believe Gates' discovery points to something that seems incredible. The work suggests that our universe is a vast cosmic computer program. And like any computer program, it suffers errors or glitches. Things like deja vu, where things happen repeatedly. It's entirely possible that our whole reality may be a, a construct, some sort of illusion. Many people, including very prominent people like Elon Musk, have bought into this idea that the universe must be a simulation. And this is where it gets even weirder. Tech billionaires in Silicon Valley are investing money into looking into ways to break out of the simulation. In effect, they're looking for another dimension, the origin of our created universe. We really have no idea what this situation is like outside of the simulation. This supports the theory of multiple universes, of which ours is just one. Once you've created that infrastructure, why wouldn't you create multiple worlds? But if we are created, the question is, who is this almighty God? Science and religion, long thought to be adversaries, appear to meet. Is God the big computer programmer? In the beginning, says the Bible, was the word. The Greek for word is logos, from which we get our word logic. Since earliest times, humans have sensed that there is a logic written into the universe by someone or something. If I'm building a computer simulation, right, I wanted that computer simulation to be a, an image of myself, right? God, it is said, created man in his image. Some NASA scientists are convinced the logic of our universe is somehow the work of a being or beings like ourselves from the future or even another dimension. Do I believe it's highly probable? Uh, I do, I do believe it's probable. I bet on it. But could humans ever create such a simulation? There's evidence that we have already taken our first steps along this path. At the University of Illinois, 
the Blue Waters supercomputer is already simulating parts of our universe with incredible accuracy. What will happen in 300 years, 1,000 years, 2,000 years from now, technologically speaking, is beyond anything that we can really comprehend. If our future humans are to build a machine big enough for this job, they will have to be very advanced indeed. In a civilization that has gone out, colonized planets, turned some of them into giant supercomputers. But physicist Michio Kaku believes that even planet-sized computers wouldn't be big enough to simulate our entire universe. Something as simple as weather with trillions upon trillions of molecules, no computer on Earth can simply model the weather. In fact, the smallest object that can simulate the weather is the weather itself. The reality, of course, is even more complicated than the weather. There's a limit to how much information you can cram inside a computer. But a convincing simulation wouldn't have to recreate the entire universe, just the bits we are looking at at any one time. If you look at a major video game, which explores an environment, which has a whole city or a, a locale, that locale is millions of times larger than the computers you use to, to, to play the game. But it's okay because we only see one frame at a time. We're only rendering one piece of it. Until I open the door, the rest of the universe and the rest of what's going on, if it were in a simulation, wouldn't exist. There would be no need for the processing power to create that. Why would these godlike humans build a simulation of the universe? You generally don't run simulations about the past to inform yourself about the past. Maybe in the future there's some type of human catastrophe, earth catastrophe. The theories just get wilder, that we are effectively lab rats in some vast time travel experiment. If you could send information back in time to affect the present, you would definitely want to run simulations to model that before you impacted your own timeline. If you have complete control over the program, you could just go in and edit it or change things. If we exist for a purpose, what happens when that purpose is fulfilled? How about when the simulation ends? What happens to all of us? If the simulation is shut off, then our world pops out of existence. Yeah.